All right, everybody, if you could please make your way to your seats. We will get things going here in just a couple minutes. Thank you very much. Clearly, I didn't get the memo on the green jacket, so this one's on me. Bill Cornwell, you're not supposed to laugh that loud. That's good. Well, welcome to another amazing milestone moment in martial athletics. We have a proud legacy in martial athletics. 18 teams, more than 450 student athletes who rep represent a university that's big enough to matter and small enough to care. Marshall University's athletics program is the heartbeat of our campus and our community. We understand why we play. We represent a community that is dreamers and doers. We represent a community that is made of both grit and grace. We represent a community that celebrates both inspiration and perspiration. 
And every time our teams take a court, a field, a pitch, a pool, a baseball diamond, or any other competitive surface, it reminds all of us of who we are and what is possible. That is why choosing who leads any one of our programs is one of the most important decisions we make because they follow in the footsteps of giants. Our men's basketball program has a proud tradition that was handcrafted by giants. One of those giants, Coach Dan D'Antoni, set the standard for excellence as a student athlete, going on to set the standard for excellence as a high school coach, then in the professional ranks, and then returning to his alma mater for 10 years to lead the Marshall Thundering Herd basketball program. Coaches do their job when they don't just build a great team, but when they build a great program. That includes recognizing the talent around them and helping others see what is possible. And last year, Coach D'Antoni's great contribution, amongst many other great contributions, was to help Christian, myself, and others recognize we had our next head coach right here in the cam, our head coach in waiting, Cornelius Corny Jackson. Corny Jackson is one of us. He's a West Virginia native. He's a son of Marshall. He led the herd as a team captain when he played, and he will now be leading the herd as its next head coach. He has a deep understanding of the game. He has a strong commitment to player success, and he has a creatively strategic approach that is celebrated and recognized throughout the collegiate basketball community. But perhaps most importantly, Corny Jackson is a winner. When he hung up his own sneakers after his playing days at Marshall, he was the second winningest player in program history. He understands our program. He has risen to the challenge, and he has earned the privilege to be Marshall University men's basketball's next head coach. And it is our honor, Corny, to tell you that all of Herd Nation stands with you and will be packing this arena, cheering you on when you take us to the next chapter of great. God bless you, Corny. Go Herd. You know, a lot of people don't like following Brad. I love following Brad because he's so inspiring and he, and he just has a way with words and it connects all of us to something bigger than our individual selves Today we're doing something a little bit different. You know, it's very rare where we speak out loud our dreams and they become reality. So many of you know Corny. So many of you know the dream that he told you all. One day I'm gonna be the head coach at Marshall. You know how rare that is? To get your dream to reality? So it feels different when you get to announce it and when you get to talk about it and when you get to be involved with it and you get to be a part of it. Just like every single one of our head coaching searches, we follow four simple real rules when we try to identify who's gonna be great to lead our student athletes and Brad has adopted these with me and wholeheartedly embraces them. Do they have a connection to this place? We all know Corny. We all know him as a player here, as a son of Marshall, how we helped develop our program with Danny. The memories that he's given us on the court as an assistant coach for this community and this basketball program, the connection to this place is sincere and genuine. Connection to people. Look at the people in this room who came back to celebrate Corny. Some of you drove from Charlotte through a storm. Some of you from Oak Hill connecting back to his past and, and here to honor his future. So many connections to this place, so many connections to our people. When you know your passion, this person that we've hired to be our next head coach oozes passion about the sport of basketball. 
you that played with him, you that grew up with him, you know Corny to be someone who inspired people to get on the court, to play basketball, to be a part of it, to understand what the game can do for your life, for your life, not just to play it, but how it can shape and mold you. True, genuine passion for the game. And then finally, do you know your purpose? What we're really here for, what we're really here for is to help young people reach their full potential. That's what coaches do. At the end of the day, it isn't wins and losses. It's did I help a young person reach their full potential? This program has done that in the decade of the D'Antoni legacy, and it will continue to do that in the era of Corny Jackson. So proud, so thrilled to announce our 30th head coach, Cornelius Jackson. The 30th head coach in the history of Marshall basketball, Cornelius Jackson. Talk about a tough task, right? Following Brad and Christian, who don't look down, who don't write anything down. They memorize everything they say. And I'm about to show my age. I'm about to put my uh, readers on. All right, so bear with me. And I promised myself I wouldn't cry. So if I get emotional, bear with me as well. Wow. Dreams do come true. Dreams do come true. This is a moment that I've dreamt of since uh, I was a 19-year-old kid sitting in Twin Towers East. And now I have the honor to stand before you as the head coach of Marshall University basketball team. How about that? <laughs> Today marks an exciting moment, not just for me, but for my entire family. The university, the community who supports it. Can I take this off? The community who supports it. First and foremost, I want to thank God he is and always will be my savior and my source of strength. I want to express my gratitude to President Brad Smith, Christian Spears, the Board of Governors, and everyone else involved in the decision-making process for entrusting me with this tremendous opportunity. I realize that I've stood on the shoulders of many great people who have played a part in helping me arrive to this destination. So with that being said, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Whew. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for loving me. Whew. And thank you for those who've always told me the truth. Thank you. I want to thank Coach Brian Poor. For giving me my start in coaching. I want, to, I want to thank Coach Jason James for giving me my first Division I coaching opportunity. I want to thank Coach Gary Waters for helping me become a better coach as well as a better man under his leadership. And lastly but not least, I want to thank Coach Dan D'Antoni. Give it up for Dan D'Antoni. I want to thank Coach for believing in me and trusting me. Coach has a saying, and anybody that knows Coach D'Antoni is up on his, in, the, in the office. It's a sign that says it's not where you go in life, but it's who you travel with. 
these past year, seven years, I've been lucky enough to travel with the best. Thanks for the ride, coach. Your legacy will always inspire us. You changed Marshall basketball for the better. First NCAA tournament win. First NCAA tournament appearance. Let's get back to that in 31 years. Give it up for that. First NCAA tournament win in school history. Give it up. Coach did that. Most last, last year, most regular season wins in Marshall basketball history. Yep. And I'm pretty sure Coach is the only one, and only coach in NCAA history who plays Christmas music during practice, shoot arounds, and pregame. I want to thank my family for their unwavering love and support. A lot of my family sitting over there, my mom, Cheryl Jackson. Thank you, Ma. I want to thank my 90-year-old beautiful grandmother who's in the building as well. Thank you, Grandma. I love you. I want to thank my, uh, my dad, Jerome Fruit, who's no longer with us. I know he's smiling down on us at this moment. To my wife, Erica, thank you. To my daughters, I don't see my daughters. Yes, I do. I see one of them. To my daughters, who probably sacrificed the most out of everybody on this list. As a coach, you travel, you miss things, you miss birthdays, you miss special moments in their lives chasing this dream. And I, I, I missed a whole lot chasing this basketball dream. And I, I like to thank my daughters for their sacrifice through it all. <laughs> to my brothers and sisters who are here, some of them, some of them uh, couldn't make it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your love and support. To Harlem Heights, the neighborhood who helped shape me into the man I am today. Thank you. Whew. Special thanks to my, uh, my college coach. He texted me, couldn't make it today. He sent me probably 52 texts in a row this morning. Coach, uh, my friend, my mentor, Coach Greg White. Thank Coach. I want to thank Coach for all he's done for me during this lifetime. To my Marshall teammates. My Marshall teammates, a lot of you guys, Alabama, drove back Charlotte, Kentucky, guys who came in from all over, Oak Hill. I'd like to thank you guys for your, uh, and assistant coaches, support staff. I'd like to thank you guys. Fellas, we took a vow <laughs> many years ago to be brothers for life. And for you to be here to support me in this moment means more than you ever know. To the Marshall basketball staff who's here with us this morning. To the player, I want to say thank you. To the players, see some of you guys up there. Thank you. Thank you for your commitment and your loyalty for this team as well as your support. I look forward to leading you. I look forward to growing with you. I look forward to going to war with you every day and creating special moments together that will last us a lifetime. Thank you guys for being here. I understand the weight of expectations that come with this position. And I assure you that I'm committed to leading this team with passion, integrity, and dedication. As we embark on this journey together, I want to emphasize that success will be a collective effort. Basketball is a team sport on and off the court. Every member of our team who we just talked about, Obina's staring at me. He'll probably tell me I look like a preacher. I see Obina staring. From the players to the coaching staff to the administration, everybody plays an integral role in our pursuit of excellence. Our goals here are clear. We aim to compete at the highest level, to inspire our fans, and to leave a legacy 
far beyond the basketball court. But I want to emphasize that success is much more, as Christian said, much more than wins and losses. It's also about the character we display, the resilience we show in the face of adversity and the impact we have on our community. I firmly believe in the power of hard work, discipline, and unity. We will approach each day with a relentless focus on improvement, pushing ourselves to reach our full potential as individuals and as a team. We will embrace challenges as opportunities for growth, and we will remain steadfast in our commitment to one another. To the fans, I want to say thank you for your support. Your passion fuels our determination, and we will strive to make you proud every step of the way. Again, I want to reiterate my profound excitement for this journey. Together, we will write the next chapter in Marshall basketball history. Thank you guys for coming, and go hurt. Just really quick, I want to share with you all a story from this guy. It's great to see my Marshall brother reaching his dreams. When I first got hired here, the first person I saw Marshall was playing Miami. The first person at Millet Hall to greet me at the door when it became official was this guy. He gave me a big hug. It's great to see him reach his dreams today as well. We're going to move to a quick Q&A question for Coach Jackson. And then tip-off club members, I'll remind you that there is a reception uh, downstairs in a Hartley room, once we are completed, media members, there will also be a Q&A section against that backdrop here in just a second, okay? Questions? Hey, Coach. Um, you made mention of, of Coach D'Antoni. How much is your relationship, will that affect how you play stylistically and just how you run your program? What you've learned from him as a mentor? Good question, Keith. I've, I've learned so much from Coach. Um, I always tell the story. Obviously, I'm a Marshall man. And when I was coaching at different spots, I would always follow Marshall. And on TV, I was one of those ones. Man, they're playing wild, trying to throw those lobs. And, you know, I was, they looked out of control. But then when I got here and got in, into practice and saw how Coach uh, runs his program, uh, I saw, like, I'll give you my first week, Keith. We were practicing, guys throwing alley-oops from half court. And the ball was going in, in the stands, some in herd heaven. They're going everywhere, and, and coaches just walking around like, that's a good one, that's a good one. And I'm cut from the old cloth. I'm like, finish the layup in my mind. And uh, after a while, guys started getting it in the games and getting it more and more in practice, and I saw that. So that obviously changed my mindset. But... I want to play, continue to play up-tempo. It's, it's a fun style to play, not only for the players, but for the fans. I believe that you can win that way. Um, so we're going to continue to play up-tempo, drag screens, it's a basketball term, lobs. So a lot of the D'Antoni ball that you've seen the last 10 years, it's up to these guys, because I'm going to implement it. It's up to them to execute it. Cornelius, uh, obviously having the pleasure to follow you when you were a young guy there at Oak Hill High School, and, uh, the late Jim Lilly, the late Ron Lewis, what would those guys, how did they impact your life? That's a good question. Mark, Mark, Mark and I, for you guys that don't know, we go way, 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 way back. Mark actually covered me in high school, so he, uh, he's, he's got a chance to see me kind of grow into the man I am today. Uh, coach Lilly, my, my dad was a coach, as you know that. Uh, my dad coached. My dad's a football hall of famer at Glenville State University. Held the record up until five years ago, the most interceptions um, in the seasons. I think a guy passed it two or three years ago. But anyway, my dad used to take me up to Coach Liddy's practices. Coach Lewis was assistant coach. I was always around the team, the Tracy Sheltons. Um, and obviously Mark remembers that. I was around those guys. So I learned a lot from Coach Lilly. I learned a lot from Coach, uh, coach Lewis just watching them and just being around. So those guys played a big part in my uh, process of being a coach. 
Coach. Um, a year ago when you were named coach in waiting, um, w w when you kind of understood that you would be the next guy, did that change anything about the way you went about last season um, in preparing yourself for this moment? No, it didn't, it didn't change. It didn't change anything. You know, my, my, my thing was always to show up to work and be the best I could for Coach D'Antoni and his program. I, 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 I truly believe that. I truly respect that. He's the head coach of the program. So my job was to come in, do what's asked to him, work my tail off to make those guys better and do anything I can to help the program. Coach, now that you have the opportunity to lead the program, what will you do to maybe make it more of your own program? You know, you, you, a lot of reference to Dan and Tony, a lot of respect for him, but what are you going to do to maybe put your fingerprints on this program, make it more yours? Well, f first, I, I, I've talked to Coach, uh, you know, since the transition was made, and he, Coach Corn, you, you got to do it your way, which we all know that. I'm going to, uh, we'll, we'll play a little bit differently de defensively than what we did. You know, we'll, we'll down another basketball turn. We'll get up in you, apply, apply a little bit more pressure. Um, and we'll have more sets and special situ moment, uh, situations um, pretty much more than Coach had. Coach, congratulations, first Thank of all. You, but you. second of all, the elephant in the room is the portal. How are you going to use that perhaps differently than it had been used before? Well, I, I couldn't hear you, Mike. What you How say? are you going to use the portal, the, the, the transfer okay, portal? Okay, transfer portal. Uh, that's the climate right now, Mike. Um, you know, we had a kid in, a portal kid. You call them portal kids. I mean, we had a portal kid in last, last week. Um, so we're very active right now in the portal. But more importantly, Mike, whether it's portal, whether it's high school, whether it's junior college, wherever we find our next guys, it's a fit. It's a lot of talented guys in the portal that may not be a right fit for Marshall and our team and our staff. So we'll, we'll find the right pit, but yes, we are actively in the portal. If you're on social media, you see that Marshall's on everybody's list along with 10,000 other schools. Um, so it's about finding the right fit, but yes, sir, we will be in the portal. Any more questions? Coach, you have uh, helped develop some excellent players here at Marshall during your tenure as a head coach. Obviously, you have some players left over from last season coming into this season. How will you try and develop the next generation of Marshall basketball players? Good question. What's your name? Ben Cower from WMUL. Okay, Ben. Good question, Ben. Well. First of all, again, that's part of getting the right guys. You know, coaches get a lot of credit for developing guys, but without guys coming in with the right attitude and the right mindset of wanting to get better, you just shrug your shoulders, right? So, again, getting the right guys, um, the program is in place. The development is in place. I was uh, actually in charge of player development when I got here, and my instruction was be creative but not circus-like. So we don't want to put a limit on, on guys. Some coaches, and it's worked. I'm not downing any other coach, but some coaches will get a seven-footer and say, get down low, you can't leave the paint. That's not really my belief. My belief is a seven-footer should be, be able to handle the ball, should be shoot the three, and finish in the paint. So we're going to uh, keep the creativity, keep the open-minded, and again, get guys in who are anxious about working. Any more questions? John Nick, you got a question? Okay. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our 30th basketball coach in history, Cornelius Corny Jackson. Fisher, Fisher, do you have a question? You have a question, Fisher? All right, no questions. Hey, th thank you all for coming. Look forward to seeing you this season. Go hurt.